Association. A whistleblower two investigation has found that a top federal agent in Atlanta violates the very rules he's supposed to enforce. Enforce. The Inspector General's Office of the Justice Department investigates suspected misconduct by thousands of federal employees, but it's not clear that anyone is policing the man in charge here. Channel 2's Richard Belcher here with the story. John, the Office of Inspector General looks over the shoulders of everyone in the Justice Department, from correctional officers to federal prosecutors. But we discovered that the special agent who runs the IG's Atlanta office is himself breaking rules that would get other employees in potentially serious trouble. It is nearly 7 o'clock on a February evening when Special Agent Bill King walks to his government car, tosses his gear in the back seat, and gets ready to drive away. It seems inconsequential, but Agent King is flagrantly violating one of the clearly stated rules he's paid more than $100,000 a year to enforce. It's an integrity issue. Paul Benners retired last year as a special agent in the Justice Department's IG's office in Atlanta. Before retiring, he complained to Washington that Agent King was violating department policy. It's very clear that the vehicle is strictly for government use and for our normal and routine commute, nothing else. You sign a document to that effect, don't you? That's correct. Channel 2 Action News obtained this log in which Agent King claimed to have placed his car out of service at 4.30 on February 2nd. That's two apparent violations in a single day. He falsely reported the time he put the car out of service and he drove it to his second job, refereeing a high school basketball game in Northeast Atlanta. That's an outright misuse of a government vehicle. On January 14th, Agent King claimed that he used his government vehicle until 6 p.m., but that evening he was refereeing another game in Alpharetta, an assignment for which he had to be at the school by 5 o'clock. We didn't see his government car that evening, but given that rush hour traffic toward Alpharetta often looks like this, Agent King appears to have placed another false entry in his vehicle log. But those aren't the only questionable entries about the car provided by the taxpayers. These documents obtained by Channel 2 Action News show that Agent King claimed to drive the vehicle 25 or 30 miles round trip between his home in Buckhead and this federal office building downtown. It's actually just over 15 miles. So the federal agent charged with policing other federal employees routinely overstated his own mileage by as much as 88 percent. It would seem to me that what's occurring is that the mileage above his round trip is a cushion in there for possible misuse or uh, failure to account for use of the vehicle. We caught up with Agent King outside his home one morning. You're claiming 25 and 30 miles to work when it's nowhere near that. According to federal laws and regulations reviewed by Channel 2 Action News, the misuse of a government vehicle should result at minimum in a 30-day suspension without pay. The Justice Department has not responded to our written request for a response. Tomorrow at 6, why is Agent King continuing to lecture other federal employees about the importance of abiding by federal laws and departmental regulations? Our Whistleblower 2 investigation tomorrow at 6. But a whistleblower to investigation has found that the inspector general's top agent in Atlanta is himself violating departmental rules. Channel 2's Richard Belcher is here with our story. John, if you are an employee of the Justice Department, say a federal prosecutor, perhaps an FBI agent, you are regularly reminded of the strict rules that govern your behavior. Violate one and you can easily get a suspension, say 30 days without pay. Do it often enough and it can cost you your job. Now look at the case of the Inspector General's top agent in Atlanta. Special Agent Bill King navigates the morning rush hour in his government car heading for his downtown office. But when he sees our camera, he literally pulls off the road, then zooms off again. Later, he slows down dramatically, right in the middle of the expressway, apparently hoping to avoid having his picture taken. What's the problem? I knew from what we did that what we were tolerating was absolutely inexcusable. Before retiring last year, Justice Department Special Agent Paul Benners wrote to Washington about alleged misconduct by Agent King, including an accusation that King misused his government car. That if Bill King had been an FBI or DEA ASAC Iraq, somebody with a equivalent stature, we would have 
demanded severe disciplinary action. Our whistleblower 2 investigation caught Agent King taking that government car to his second job as a basketball referee. Under federal regulations and federal law, willful misuse of a government vehicle warrants a mandatory 30-day suspension without pay. We also found repeated instances in which Agent King claimed the round trip from his home to the office was 25 or 30 miles, when in fact, it's just under 16 miles. But despite his own actions, King continues to remind Justice Department employees about their responsibility. If you break the least little rule, then you're in trouble. I mean, he's very adamant about that. Leo Spell, a veteran correctional officer at the federal prison in Jessup, Georgia, recently heard Agent King's integrity briefing for prison employees. Spell says whether it's misusing a vehicle or taking computer paper, watch out. <laughs> you do not want them to investigate you. Because you, regardless if you've done it or not, it's a good chance you're going to get charged with it. Just, you just know that. Even if it's as small potatoes as computer paper. Yeah. Paul Benner says the double standard is intolerable. If I did what Mr. King is alleged to have done, I would not be surprised if I was fired. If I'd done the exact same thing, then I would be in trouble. Point blank. The Justice Department in Washington ignored repeated efforts to get a response to our findings about Special Agent King, and the department denied our request for more vehicle logs and for Agent King's timesheets. If you'd like to blow the whistle, call our hotline. The number is 404-897-2235, or you can email us at whistleblower at wsbtv.com. agency tried to keep the lid on the case. Channel 2's Richard Belcher is here now with the story. Richard. Agent Bill King was the head of the Justice Department's Office of Inspector General in Atlanta, a powerful federal official with the authority to investigate federal agents, prosecutors, and other employees all across the Southeast. But we caught him red-handed, breaking agency rules on his government vehicle and outside employment. Agent King tried to avoid us last year as he drove the same government car he now admits misusing. By then, he was already in trouble. Tipped off by an agency insider and aware of our Whistleblower 2 investigation, King's superiors had sent him this letter, notifying him of possible disciplinary action. The administrative law judge says it's undisputed that uh, King, when it... 14 months later, retired special agent Paul Benners goes through the files the government didn't want the public to see. He obtained the files through the Freedom of Information Act they lay out the findings against his former boss, that he repeatedly misused his government vehicle and repeatedly engaged in outside work which was not approved by the department. These are people who must operate at the highest levels of integrity. They enforce the rules for everyone else, which in this, under Mr. King's uh, jurisdiction would have been literally thousands and thousands of agents and prosecutors. The files revealed the disciplinary action Agent King faces, starting with 35 days suspension without pay. On his salary of approximately $135,000 a year, that would cost him an estimated $13,000. He was also demoted and ordered transferred out of Atlanta to New York, but Paul well, Benner says that's not enough. Had it happened to me, and I think any FBI agent or DEA agent that watches your program, they would say, wait a minute, I would have been fired. I would have probably been prosecuted. And taxpayers get angry about those things. Former federal prosecutor Andrew Economo says the average person hears about the kinds of violations documented in Agent King's case and wonders what's going on. Why is this person who's supposed to be in a capacity of a fiduciary, someone that owes an, a duty of honor and good faith dealing to the government, have the right to drive his vehicle to and from his private employment? Our investigation captured Agent King using his government car to drive to one of the second jobs he admits having, refereeing high school basketball games. According to his appeal, King argued unsuccessfully that this qualified as a government-approved fitness program. The file also reveals that King admitted having a second unauthorized job to which he drove his government car, teaching at Phoenix University in Alpharetta. That is well up Georgia 400, 10 miles north of the agent's home. Records show that King said that was legitimate,
because he was developing contacts with other law enforcement officers. That, too, was rejected. But the only reason any of this is public is Paul Benner's tracked down the records of Agent King's appeal. The Department of Justice, he says, wanted to keep a lid on an embarrassing case. This has essentially been swept under the rug. And they're hoping that I go away, that you go away, and they'll go back to business as normal. While he was still working for the Justice Department, Agent Paul Benners filed several whistleblower complaints, complaints against Agent King, including allegations about the misuse of King's government vehicle. The files include references to two others, unnamed whistleblowers who also filed complaints. Mr. King's lawyer says his client continues to deny the charges against him and is appealing his suspension, demotion, and transfer.